Welcome to the Battery 3 Quick Start Tutorial. This tutorial will provide you with some first steps that will get you up and running with Battery 3. After installation and upon your first start in standalone mode, you are presented with a dialog box that contains your audio and MIDI settings. You can also access these settings from the file menu. First, choose your interface type. ASIO and Core Audio are your best options. Select the desired sample rate and choose your output device. Click on Routing to choose your desired outputs. Battery offers up to 16 stereo or 32 mono outputs. If your sound card has multiple output capabilities, here is where you configure those. When you click on the MIDI tab, you'll see a list of MIDI in and outs if you have a MIDI device installed. You can toggle between on and off by clicking on the interface. Finally, click on OK to apply your changes. OK, now we are ready to make some sound. We've made this easy by giving you nearly 12 gigabytes of samples. In the middle of Battery 3 window, you will see lots of small boxes. These are called cells. Each cell can hold a specific sound. Let's load a kit and see how everything looks. Battery 3 has an integrated file menu. Here you can find those commands that you are used to from other file menus, for example, Open, Save, Save As, and Options. To load a kit, select Open. In the dialog box, navigate to where the Battery 3 library is installed and choose a kit. Or, much easier, just click on the kit selection menu in the header and choose a kit. When the kit has loaded, you can take a look at how things are arranged. A click on the cell plays back its content. If you have a MIDI keyboard connected, each cell can be triggered with another key on your keyboard. Now your drum kit is ready to be played. If you want to build up your own kits, this is easily achieved. Simply click on the browser and drag and drop your files onto an empty cell. Battery 3 supports most of the current sounds or sample formats. If you right click on a single cell, you can additionally access the brand new cell library containing over 4,000 drum cells from the library categorized into single instruments, for example, bass drums, snares, cymbals, and so on. Just select library and choose your instrument. Additionally, each cell has a next previous button which appears upon selection of the cell. When the alt key is pressed, it allows quick access to the next or previous sample to be loaded. Just hold down the alt key and click on the little arrows in the cell. This function is very handy when working on a track and you simply want to change one sound, the bass drum for example. Just switch through all the bass drums while your track is playing. You could also load an existing kit, replace some cells, and save it to a new drum kit on your hard drive. The Edit pane is where you can access the following sub-panels to edit your individual cells. You can access the Cell, Setup, Mapping, Wave, Loop, Modulation, Effects, and Master Effects panel to change each individual cell parameters. Since this is only a first steps guide, we won't go into all the details, but be sure to check out the advanced tutorials. In this case, we want to take a look at Battery 3 when used as a VST plugin with Cubase SX or Nuendo. Launch your sequencer and create an empty project. 
Now, go to the Devices menu and select the VST Instruments option or press F11 on your keyboard. A window showing the instrument rack appears. Click on an empty slot and choose Battery 3 from the available list of instrument plugins. The plugin will now appear in your list and automatically be turned on. It will also create a set of audio channels in your VST mixer that will be used for mix down within your project. This will allow you to mix, pan, and process batteries' outputs just like any other existing audio track in your song. Now go to the project page and add a MIDI track. Go to the output parameter section for this MIDI track and choose Battery 3 from the list. Choose your MIDI keyboard at the input section and enable recording. Click on the edit button to call up the battery interface. Here, you can control and edit all features and functions Battery 3 has to offer. After having loaded an instrument from the library, you should be able to trigger it via MIDI. Or simply load a MIDI file to your MIDI track and press play. Well, now you know the basics around Battery 3. We hope we got you started. Nevertheless, with this tutorial, we've just scratched the surface. So if you want to go a little deeper, we suggest that you watch the other tutorials with Battery 3. Enjoy! Your Native Instruments team.